This unit is about the highest ranking unit in syntax, the sentence. We will proceed according to the following steps. We will first of all analyze sentence types, find out what types of sentences there are. Then we will draw a distinction between major and minor sentences. And finally, we will deal with a phenomenon called ellipsis. So, what sort of sentence types are there? Well, in general, we define two sentence types, so-called minor sentences and major sentences. They can be distinguished via three central criteria. Criterion one is the availability of what you might want to call a subject predicate structure. So that's the first criterion. A second one is a test which is often used in linguistics, the so-called substitution test. And a third criterion is a test which moves around elements within the sentence, the transformation test. So these are the three criteria which we are going to apply. In addition to these two sentences, to the minor and major types of sentences, there are sentences, there are major sentences that are incomplete. They are referred to as elliptical sentences and will be dealt with later. Let's first of all look at minor sentences. Here we have, a, first of all, some examples. Down with Smith. This is an example where, well, you wouldn't have a subject predicate structure. Where is the, the, the predicate? There is no verb even in this sentence. And what about the subject? It's simply not there. The sooner the better is another example. Well, what can we do with this sentence? We cannot move elements around. The better, the sooner, or something like that. It simply doesn't work. How are you is one of these questions we ask 25 times per day where we don't even want an answer. It's some sort of common phrase, some fixed phrase, which we often use in order to uh, open a conversation. But we wouldn't normally ask something like, how is he? We, we can't replace any elements by other elements in this sentence. So it's fixed. There is um, no, well, here we have a subject predicate structure, but we cannot transform this this sentence in any way, we cannot substitute elements. And finally, look at Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas is one of these examples where you um, don't even know where is the verb again, so there's no subject predicate structure. You cannot rearrange the elements, no transformation possible. What would that be if we transform that into a passive? Merry Christmas is wished by me. No, you can't do that. And you can't even substitute any elements. You cannot say, Great Christmas. Well, it works to some extent with some adjectives, but not normally. So due to their behavior as fixed units that cannot be rearranged, that cannot be moved around, these minor sentences are often referred to as um, fixed phrases. Their use is mostly restricted to comment function, or it is connected with specific communicative purposes. Let's contrast this with major sentences. Now, major sentences typically have a subject predicate structure. That is, and, and sometimes they're even preceded by a so-called operator. So here's one example. The cat sat on the mat, where the cat is a subject, and the predicate is sat on the mat. mat. The predicate may even contain some arguments here, an object, for example. Um, now, can, you can easily move these things around in questions like, did the cat sit on the mat, or the dog sat on the mat, or a dog sat on the mat, or a tiger uh, sat on the carpet, and so on and so forth. So here is another example, whoops, where we have uh, a mistake. John gave Mary a book, this must be. So here I prepared something wrongly, gave Mary 
a book. And again, we have a subject and a predicate, so it's just the same. Now, here we have something with an operator. Has he done his homework? Subject, he, predicate, done his homework and has, has been moved to the beginning of the sentence. Inversion is the operation where we have an operator, a subject, and a predicate. Well, and we can even use our Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas, but now it is embedded within a major sentence with a subject and a predicate structure. Ellipsis. Now, we have major sentences where elements have been omitted. So, ellipsis means grammatical omission. In contrast to other omissions, types of omissions in language, for example, uh, phonological loss or you can clip words. You can, there are various types of omission possible in language. Now, in general, ellipsis explains why some normally obligatory element of a grammatical sentence is missing. So, here is an example. So, we, mm, let's take the following. If he works hard, if he works hard, I won't have to. And what is missing here, of course, at the end is, I don't have to work hard. Well, especially important in ellipsis is the principle of word by word of verbatim recoverability. That is, the actual words who are missing must be implicitly understood. Thus, they must be recoverable. Strict ellipsis then requires that when the missing words are inserted, the meaning doesn't change. So, if he works hard, I won't have to work hard. The meaning is exactly the same. Now, depending on the type of recoverability, so we don't need this anymore. Let's wipe it off. We have several types of ellipsis, which are here. Situational ellipsis, structural ellipsis, and textual ellipsis. Let's use one example per type of ellipsis. So, here we have... The classical case, got it. Now, this looks like a minor sentence, but it isn't, because got it, where we could say something like it's got the letter. We recover the words the letter. Or we even replace got by understood. Understood it. Did you understand it? So, this is called situational ellipsis, because the interpretation depends on the knowledge of a precise extra-linguistic context. The second one is often used in headlines. So we can have something like US, so a typical newspaper headline, US heading, the United States heading, heading, well, for what can they head for? New slump. So this sort of block language, which is used in headlines, is referred to a structural ellipsis where the interpretation depends on the knowledge of the grammatical structure. So the element that is missing here is certainly is or are, depending on how you define the United States as um, a singular or a plural. So here the verb is missing. And then finally, we have textual uh, ellipsis where the interpretation depends on what is said or written in the linguistic context. So an example could be, I am happy if you are. And of course we know that the missing element must be happy. Well, so ellipsis then is really a special case of major sentence where the missing elements can be recovered relatively unambiguously. Well, let's summarize what we've done. The focus of syntax is then major sentences. We do not really deal with minor sentences, but major sentences constitute the core of syntactic analysis. In present-day English, there are four types of major sentences. There are so-called declaratives, 
or declarative sentences. We have imperative sentences or imperatives. We have um, interrogative sentences or interrogatives. And finally, we have exclamatory sentences or exclamations. There are also alternative terms used for these. Let's quickly write them down. Declaratives are also called statements. Imperative sentences are called commands. Interrogatives, well, that's known to everyone, are called questions. Well, and here we have exclamations as an alternative term for exclamatory sentences. Their precise internal structure will be explained in another unit.